find g of f of x and the domain of the composite function. All right, so here we have the example f of x is equal to 2 minus 3x, and g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 3, and we're asked to find the composite function g of f of x. Well, g here plays the role of our outside function this time, so we're going to write down g. That's our first function. We're going to write it down and leave a space where the x is, right? So we're going to write that down, leave a space where x used to be, and then put the minus 3 that g of x has in it, right? Then from there, we're going to take the f of x function and plug it in where the x used to be, right? So 2 minus 3x is what we'll do. We'll plug that piece basically into the function. And then if we clean this up a little bit, this is the same as saying what? 2 minus 3 is negative 1, then minus 3x. That is your g of f function. Okay, very good. So we have the function. Now we just need to consider its domain. So remember, when you're looking at the domain, you need to consider the final function that resulted and the function that went inside to produce that function. So the final function has a domain of what? Well, we want to make sure that negative 1 minus 3x is strictly greater than or equal to 0 so we don't get any imaginary numbers. So what does that say that x needs to be? Well, if we move this piece over to the other side, it'll be negative 1 is greater than or equal to positive 3x. And if we divide both sides by 3, we'll get rid of the 3 that's in front of x, and we have negative 1 third is greater than or equal to x. And so that's the idea for the domain of the final function. We're basically saying that x has to be less than or equal to negative 1 third. Okay, so if you want to write that in integral notation, you'd say that, well, x then must be from negative infinity up to negative 1 third, and that's okay to include 1 third here. So I'll use a square bracket there on the 1 third, and use a rounded parenthesis, of course, on the negative infinity. So that's the final function's domain, but don't forget the inside function is important as well. The f function was the function we put inside, so we need to intersect this domain for the final function with the function that went inside's domain. So that means f's function. So what's the domain of f? Well, it's all real numbers, right? There are no restrictions on f. So from negative infinity to positive infinity is what we have as the domain of f. And the reason why I say all real numbers is because there's no fractions in f. There are no radicals in f. There's nothing we'd need to worry about. So you can put anything you want into f. For the final function, you have to be careful and make sure that what you put into the function is strictly less than or equal to 1 third, right? Now, the intersection of these two sets is basically the smaller of the two, which is going to be negative infinity to negative 1 third. And that's the domain of the final function. Okay, let's take a look at example B. For example B, you're doing the same thing, g of f of x. So write down g and leave a space where the x's are located in the function itself, right? So it'll be space squared plus two times space. And in the space, you're going to plug in the f function since the f function is the inside function in this case, right? And the f function is just the square root of x plus 2. So that is your g of f of x function. Now, of course, if you square the square root, you just end up with what's underneath it. So it'll just be x plus 2 there, then plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2. And that is your g of f of x function. So we have the function. Now we need to get its domain. So same thing as before. We have a radical. And for radicals, we need to be concerned about the underneath the radical being negative. We don't want imaginary numbers there. So what we're going to say is that the x plus 2 that's under that radical must be strictly greater than or equal to 0, right? All right, and if that's the case, that means that x must be greater than or equal to negative 2. Right? If I move this over, it becomes negative 2. And so that statement basically is the same as saying that from negative in 2 to infinity is the domain for the final function, right? You can put any of those numbers into the final function, and you'll be safe. You won't have any imaginary numbers. You won't have any undefined points. All those numbers will work. However, we also have to consider the inside function. Now, the inside function was f. So that function actually turns out to have the exact same domain because f is the square root of x plus 2, right? So the domain for that is also that what? x plus 2 must be greater than or equal to 0. So that means its answer is going to be the same as it was for the final function. And if we take the intersection of the 2 then, we end up with negative 2 to infinity. Okay, so remember the idea of taking the intersection. You're trying to find where the two sets are in common. In this case, they're completely overlapping one another, so the answer is negative 2 to infinity for this particular question. But the whole idea of taking the intersection is just that you want to make sure that you don't have a violation of domain for the function that's going inside the composite function. And then when you finish the result and you get the composite function, you don't want to put anything inside of there that's a problem. So by finding the 
intersection, you're basically taking the most conservative answer, right? You're making sure there are no problems in either of the two functions, not the one you ended up with and not the one that you inserted into the composition.